Howdy folks, um, this is not what I intended my second video for the spiritual discussions group to be, but as usual, my plans uh, go awry. So, uh, this one addresses the video made by Digital Surgeon, a.k.a. Christian Guy TV and his video about homosexuality and all of that. That it it I, I shouldn't say it addresses that it is it was inspired by that. Um as well as the responses that it got. The first thing I'm gonna say is this is the spiritual discussions group. Now this is where people are free to discuss their faith. No personal attacks, no no judging, no recruiting, discussing your faith so that other people can understand you. Okay? Now, regarding homosexuality, is it a sin according to the Bible? Absolutely. No question. It is a sin punishable by death. So is adultery. So is sex before marriage. So is sex outside of marriage in any way. Why are these other sexual sins basically given a silent nod of approval? While homosexuality is attacked so vehemently by so many Christians. Jesus Christ never spoke on homosexuality. He didn't speak on sexual matters much at all. The only one that comes to mind right off the top of my head is when he came across the crowd about to stone the adulterers. And he turned to them and said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And the crowd melted away because they had all sinned. I don't believe that reference to picking up the physical act of picking up a rock and throwing it. I believe that goes hand in hand with judge not lest ye be judged. And that extends into be judged by the same standard by which you judge. I certainly don't want to be judged for my sins. And I have committed sexual sin. I have engaged in premarital and outside of marriage sex. I never cheated on my wife, but I was only married two and a half years. Now, I have tried to be right with God, but that's a hell of a temptation. <laughs> One of the things that strikes me as a very possible cause that homosexuality is targeted so frequently by evangelical Christians is that homosexuals make up such a small percentage of the population. Whereas people that are living together and have no plans on ever getting married, and it, that includes people that are raising families but never plan on getting married. People that engage in one night stands Go out to the bar specifically to look for someone to have a one night stand with. People that date for a while and begin to have sex before they've even considered the possibility of marriage. As well as people that, swingers groups is another example where people are into wife swapping and all of that. And people that 
are together and decide that they're going to get married and begin engaging in sexual insects before the nuptials. All of these are sins punishable by death, the same as homosexuality. Homosexuality was not singled out as especially evil by God. Homosexuality was singled out by men. And why? I'll be very blunt here and say I believe it's because of cowardice. It's easy to pick on a group as small and relatively powerless as homosexuals. They can't do much about it. They don't have the numbers. They can't react forcefully. TV preachers, for example, love to rant and rave about homosexuality and how terrible it is. Well, they don't have any risk of losing advertisers by pissing off, you know, a small percentage of the population and a smaller percentage of their viewer, viewing audience. Let them start ranting and raving in the same exact tones with the same judgment because it is judgment. With that same judgment, and I'll get into that in a moment, um, about people that are living together outside of marriage, people that are engaging in sex while they're dating, the things that the majority of Americans engage in as far as sexual sin goes. Well, they're going to piss off a whole lot of people who are then going to contact their advertisers and the show is going to go off the air for lack of funding. It's cowardice. And it's the same with individuals. I'm sorry to say it, but I believe it is. People attack homosexuality and they can expect flack from homosexuals and those who um, support them and their rights and not much, not many other people. But if they start attacking the sexual sins that are equally abhorrent to God of heterosexuals, they're going to get a whole lot of flack from a whole lot of people. Now, why sex, why slip out of the group homosexuality all by itself? If you're going to discuss the Bible and sexual sin, discuss it as a whole would be my suggestion. Because it is all, as I said, equally abhorrent to God. The reason an angel had to appear to Joseph was because the Holy Ghost impregnated Mary and he had to know. Otherwise, he may have rejected Mary in her pregnant state and the result would have been death. She would have been stoned to death. This is... I mean, they had to be married before the baby was born, before Jesus was born. So again, why separate out this one small percentage of sexual sinners from all of the sexual sinners out there who are equally guilty and equally whose actions are equally abhorred by God. I'm guilty of it myself. Not right now, but I have been in the past. 
I may be in the future. Hopefully not, but we'll see how strong my will is to avoid that particular temptation should it present itself again. Um, judgment. When if I tell someone you are going to hell unless you do this, that, or the other that's judgment. I am judging their fate. That judgment is up to God. I don't know what God's judgment will be of that individual. I don't know their heart. I don't know their future. I don't know if they're going to change their ways or not. As I mentioned before, I don't bring up my faith to people unless asked. Now, spiritual discussions group, this is a different matter. But I don't judge. I don't even start to judge. I don't know what my fate is going to be. Because I don't presume to tell God whether I am acceptable in His eyes or not. And if I don't do that with myself, I'm sure not going to be doing it with anyone else. Um, when you pick a small group that is relatively weak and cannot defend itself effectively to pick on, this is called persecution. I hear Christians complaining that they are persecuted. I have never been persecuted for my faith. Ever. I've never had anyone treat me badly because I am a Christian. Not in the real world at least. There are the atheists on YouTube here that that um, go on and about how anybody that believes in God is stupid and all of that, but that's not persecution against me personally. Now, as I say, when you pick on, when you choose a specific group that is small and relatively defenseless, I don't care what the group is, and you start singling them out for judgment, that is persecution. There are no two ways about it. Especially when there are so many sexual sinners out there that are heterosexual, and they are, as I said, given this silent nod of, all right, we'll give you a pass. We won't talk to you about your sins. And that is cowardly, in my opinion. Now, I don't judge anybody. I accept people as they are. I live my life by my faith and it's been surprisingly effective. I'll have people ask me how you've had a very difficult life. How is it that you're happy? And this opens up the door and I can tell them I'm happy because you know God takes care of me. Poof, end, finish, stop. If they want to know more, they'll ask more. If that's enough for them, at least for the moment, they may ask more later, they may not. But if that's enough, that's where it stops. I don't push it. So my suggestion, and the Bible is... This is fact. This is recorded fact. The Bible is incomplete. I will have to go back and look. I'm going to do a section in my regular series on the Bible. And at that time I will point this out. But the Bible, what went into the Bible was determined by the early Catholic Church in, I believe it was the 3rd and the 4th centuries. 
And they threw out a lot of books that they didn't like. Um, and it was used as a political tool. That's a large part of what Martin Luther protested against. So it is incomplete. It has also been translated so many times different Bibles say certainly different things. Now the way I do things personally is if I have a moral quandary. For example, when I was divorced, I had a real quandary about whether or not I was committed to that marriage for the rest of my life or whether I would be free to marry again. I look at every version of the Bible I can, every translation that I can find, because I figure somewhere in there is the truth. One translation I don't believe cuts it because, not because the person translating the Bible is necessarily doing any mistranslation mal maliciously, but because people cannot help but inject their own interpretation of things and their own bias into those translations. No matter how hard they try to be totally objective, it's impossible. As just one example, and my Spanish sucks, so don't think I'm claiming to be bilingual or anything like that, but the word uh, Cielo. I named Ciela, my dog, after that. I did not know at the time I named her that Cielo is not a gender-specific word. It is not masculine nor feminine. So I put the A on the end to turn it feminine because Ciela is a girl dog. Uh, but Ciela is not a word. Cielo is the word, and it means heaven, sky, and clouds. So, if someone were to say, in Spanish, I saw a bird in the cielos, to use that word, do they mean they saw a bird in the clouds? Do they mean they saw a bird in the skies? Or do they mean they saw a bird in the heavens? That person's thinking is going to influence how they translate that. So, I don't trust any one version of the Bible to be accurate and correct. <coughs> and again, singling out one small portion, and it is a small portion of sexual sinners for particular attention, for that laser beam of damnation, you're going to hell, that is damnation is cowardly and in many cases hypocritical in my mind because it gives silent approval to the heterosexual sinners out there which if you are called to preach the gospel which I am not should not be without limits should not be without I mean, it shouldn't have, okay, well, I'll choose this particular group and ignore the rest, the much larger portion. So, that's my take. I don't judge. Unless someone is actively harming another individual, I don't judge. Pretty much everybody in America has heard of Christ and his rules. <coughs> They've heard of God and his rules, and going on and on about it doesn't do any good. Using my life as an example is what I have been called to do currently. And I had other jobs in the past, but never 
to preach. So, something to think about for those of you who feel called to preach about sexual sin. Why pick out this one small and relatively weak group for damnation when God himself does not? If you're looking to address sinners and correct sin, it seems to me you would go after the larger group of sinners. More souls that are at risk. There's my take on it. So, as a final word, I'm going to say this. This I've seen some comments where, don't say this, don't say that, keep your views to yourself. That is not what this group is about. This group is where people can express their spiritual beliefs without fear of attack. If you don't like what someone is saying, put your own views up your own spiritual views out there in response. Simply telling somebody, oh, you're wrong, doesn't do anything. And that, and being vulgar and crude and saying F you and so on and so forth, that gets into personal attacks which are not allowed on this channel, in this group. Um, so don't do that I'm giving my spiritual views here to my fellow Christians they're welcome to retort and it's a debate not an argument, not a fight it's a debate same thing with Christians and non-Christians it's a debate it's a discussion, not about who's right or wrong, simply a way to understand each other better. That is the goal of this group. So I'd like everyone to keep that in mind, please. All right, everybody, y'all have a good day, and I will holler at y'all later. God bless every one of you, even those of you who don't believe in God. <laughs> Adios.